Hi, welcome to how to build your own computer for the first timer, for the second timer, or whenever you're building a new one. Step 1. Planning. So the first step in uh, building your own computer is you want to find a case that you like. Uh, many places sell computer cases. Uh, most often I go to Newegg or Amazon because they usually have the better deals. So once you've selected a case, what you want to make sure that you do is record down the size of the motherboard it takes. ATX is the standard size, it's a little larger than everything else. Micro ATX is um, slightly smaller, usually it's the difference of 2-3 to three PCI slots. Um, if you're looking to get multiple graphics cards on your new computer, you want to find a computer that could take an ATX board. These boards usually are um, uh, bigger, they have more space for you to uh, add in additional things. Now you want to select what CPU you want. Um, Intel and AMD, they're the most prominent players in the CPU industry. There are some smaller brands, but uh, the reliability issues, I am not sure. Um, usually if you want the best performance, irregardless of money, you want to go with Intel. They do provide the best performance, but if you're just looking for a budget build where you get um, the best price per performance ratio, you want to look for AMDs. If you're unsure uh, what processor you want to go with, there's this nifty website called TomsHardware.com. They do have these great recommendations for uh, CPUs. You they give you a budget and then they select the best CPU for that in that range. So these are the hundreds. You have the hundred to two hundreds, or you could go to two hundred and up if you have money to spare. So now you actually get to select the CPU you want. For me, I've chosen the Intel Core i7 2600. It's three hundred dollars, but it is one of the best ones out there. So when you click it in, what you need to know is this. Go down to details, the CPU socket type, LGA1155. This is the Intel Sandy Bridge socket. This is very important because this will determine what type of motherboard you can get. Um, just a little tidbit, um, most of the newer Intel Core i7s if they've come with four di letter or four digits afterwards, these are the Sandy Bridge in, um, sockets. They will usually be in LG81155 socket. There is a first generation Intel Core i7 or i5. They will be three digits and then they will fit only in socket 1156. Do not get them confused because it is very s tiny detail. With AMD CPU, it is a little easier because most of their sockets are AM3. Uh, they are backwards compatible, so if you get older CPUs, they could fit also in these newer AM3 motherboards. But the rule of thumb is, once you click in, go to details, find the CPU socket. It'll tell you exactly what you need. Uh, normally when you purchase the CPU, um, they would come with a stock cooler for your CPU but if you feel like you want a cooler looking one or you don't want your computer running too hot there are other options options that you could use and then you could replace the existing um, cooler that manufacturer gives to you with these better ones so now you have the case which um, either ATX or micro ATX and you have the CPU that you want you can go find the motherboard that you need so for us we selected an Intel Core i7 and we'll be looking for Intel LG81155 socket and I believe this case is ATX correct that's correct so that, that fits our case so this would be a motherboard that we could use so once you've got the first two requirements, the, the size of the motherboard and the CPU socket down, all these now are 
depending on your preferences. Most uh, motherboards, they do come with four memory slots. These are the memory slots. These are the CPU sockets. Um, what you want to decide on is if you have a need for multiple graphics card. If you're a hardcore gamer and you want the best performance, you may look for ones that have uh, multiple PCI Express slots so you could fit two or three or four graphics card inside. So from the motherboard page, you could determine what you uh, exactly need. This motherboard supports uh, memory latencies of 1333 or 1066. These are the base latency that doesn't require overclocking. Um, overclocking allows faster memory um, ratings, but you won't really see much of a difference on ev everyday computer use so it's usually safer to just go with the base latency it sh will be more than sufficient and also you want to make sure that uh, your memory is of the same standard uh, most modern m uh, motherboards use DDR3 now so if you just look for DDR3 and then with within any of these these three should be fine so now we got most uh, the important components squared away the other stuff that you still need are a power supply power supply they will come with a 24 pin ATX power supply connector and then also an 8 pin CPU power connector and most modern power supply these days will carry both an 8 pin and a 4 pin some so smaller motherboards only require a 4 pin power connector to run so that's why modern uh, power supplies will give you those. Um, as a rule of thumb, usually you want at least a 450 watt if you have one graphic card. That should be sufficient to supply all of the components on, uh, that you're going atta get attached to your board. Um, for a safer route, you might want to get a 550 watt. A 550 watt they will provide ample um, power and then in case something goes wrong it would still have enough to supply the system so uh, when you want to get two or three or four more graphics card um, you would really want to get a higher uh, power supply this is 650 usually you one or two should be sufficient for this one but if you're going three or four you want to get something that's 750 or 1000 watts. And there's these designations 80 plus or 80 plus bronze, silver, or gold. Um, 80 plus means that the power supply can run at 80% efficiency, thereby saving you energy. Um, 80 plus and 80 plus bronze are usually cheaper. Um, if you want to spend more money, get the silver or gold. Um, that is also fine, but the price that you're paying now and the money that you save on the energy won't really equal up so um, usually an 80 plus to 80 plus bronze would be sufficient normally depending on the power sub, uh, depending on the components that you have I would recommend at least a 450 watt if you're using one graphic card uh, a 550 watt if you're using two graphic card and add another hundred if you're using three or go up to a thousand if you're using four so after you've selected your power supply, you also need to get your uh, media drive, such as DVD drive, DVD burner, or Blu-ray drive. Um, also, you can get a solid-state drive for that send hard drive for your uh, memory storage. They all they're all connected by SATA connectors, so you want to make sure you have sufficient to connect to um, however many that you have. Um, hard drives these days are about the same. Um, your main drive should be a 7200 RPM drive. These are the standard speed and then they would um, give you more output. And this one has a 3 terabyte storage space so that will be great for storing your photos, music or videos. Now if you want a really fast computer uh, solid state drive are the way to go they are tremendously faster than the hard drive that I showed you earlier they run by using uh, memory chips instead of uh, spinning disks so um, they 
basically they're the last remaining bottleneck of a modern computer so if you change your computer's uh, main hard drive to a solid state drive such as this one you'll see your uh, computer turn on in 10 or 15 seconds whereas if you had a hard drive it would turn on in like a minute or a minute 50 uh, the last piece of hardware that you need that you'll need is the graphic card um, some motherboard actually do come with onboard graphics so if you're just looking to do um, some light video watching on YouTube or uh, sometimes blu-ray or some DVD videos onboard graphics should be sufficient but if you want to play extreme games that requires a lot of uh, pixel output then you're gonna want to buy a graphic card so here's the final checklist of what you'll need you'll need a case a motherboard a CPU a memory power supply, a DVD drive for reading medias, and usually most DVD drives they come with either a, a burner, RW or W, and then a CD combo drive, uh, and also a hard drive. These are the seven main things that you'll need to run your computer, and if you want something more, you can also always get a aftermarket CPU fan, that, like I introduced earlier, a powerful graphics card, or if you're hooking up your computer to a surround sound system, you can get a sound card or get a wireless internet card. These two actually plugs into PCI card, uh, PCI slots, so you want to look at that in your motherboard page to make sure they have enough ports for you.